Hey there, Danny K coming to you from Danny K Jimbo Wellness. Um, yeah, gonna give a little couple of minutes for a couple of viewers to pop in. But basically, today's tip is about rotator cuff exercises. Another text, sorry. <laughs> live folk, live TV folks. Um, but I wish back in the day when I first started lifting, somebody were, would have told me about rotator cuff exercises and strengthening the muscle underneath the muscle. So your rotator cuffs, basically, they keep the, the joint in, you know, your shoulder joint or whatever together, okay? Um, you know, if, if they're strong, then the joint's going to be strong. So what happened with me, I didn't know about rotator cuff muscles and, and exercises and stuff like that, you know, 20 some odd years ago when I started. Um, so basically I got, you know, all these, you know, this delt strength and everything. And then I started dislocating my shoulder my shoulder started separating. And, you know, of course I was a dancer, um, not that kind of dancer, get your mind out the gutter. Um, I taught dance. I was a choreographer. Um, you know, I had a dance studio, so <clears throat> my shoulder, you know, and doing crazy break dance and things, it would slip out. And so I didn't know about strengthening muscles underneath muscles. I, I was like, what the hell is that? So, um, as you know, I've gotten into the field and gotten, you know, more, you know, in tune to the body and, and what to do to prevent things before they actually happen. I've been trying to help my clients, um, you know, prevent shoulder injuries and so forth as much as we possibly can. So I've said it before, imbalance creates injury. So if, you know, one side, whether it's uh, like for, you know, like knees or, or stomach and back, you know, if one side's weak, the other side's going to be weak as well. So we have to create a balance so that you don't get injured. So just like inside and outside. So inside, if your inside muscles, rotator cuffs and all that, are weak and your outside muscles are stronger it's going to create an imbalance and something's got to give okay so let me just show you i'm going to grab now when i do there's a couple of different rotator cuff exercises that i do there's other ones out there um but just and there's different ways of doing what i actually do um sometimes i'm just shy on time so i have to kind of speed through so to speak, not to injure, but speed through just to get it done. So one thing that you would do, like I always stand in the mirror and I stand like this. So my, my wrists are in line with my shoulder and then I take it out. I can't take that one out. So I'm going to go this way. So I stand in line, uh, hands, wrists in line with your shoulder and you take it to your shoulder. Now, if you see, it's a five pound weight, it's very light. So I do light weight and heavy reps. So I stand this way and I go out and I, I try and have a loose grip so that my rotator cuff, my shoulder muscles feel it. My abs are tight, my knees are soft. So I'm like this and I do 15, okay? And I'm controlled with that because obviously when your arm is extended out, your shoulder is in a very vulnerable position, okay? There's um, another thing we call salt and pepper shaker. So one, Watch out for my dog. So I have upside down, kind of like pinkies up. And then I'm not gonna do this side because of the wall, but you know, I do this. Okay, so, and it's kind of like on a 45. So I always tell people, imagine if you're standing inside of a box, your arm is pointed to that corner. So pinkies up and both, I take both of them up. And again, like I said, I'm going against the wall. So if I stand this way, I'm on an angle and I take it at 45. So I do that 10 times or whatever. And then I stand this way with thumb up. That's why they're called salt and pepper shaker. I don't know why, but I guess cause it's like you're doing a salt shaker and a pepper shaker. But again, with the wall, I'm gonna take this side up. So again, I'm on that 45 degree angle and I'm taking it up lightweight. Again, only five pounds. So we do this, this one. Okay, then we do the thumbs up, we do the pinkies up, okay? So it's just a matter of turning my wrist from that to that, okay? Um, and there's another one that I do, and I take a little bit heavier weight because you can do it a little bit, you, you, got, you have a little bit more strength and your shoulder is a little bit more protected. So I stand, I usually take like a 12 or a 15 pound weight um, and I stand like 90 degrees like this and then I take it out. So I'm keeping my elbow to my body, to my side. I'm not letting it flare out or anything like that. I'm just taking my 
from the side and out. So that's working your rotator cuff. Now, sometimes you see people laying on the floor, which is definitely, I don't have a lot of time, a lot of times to lay on the floor to do those types of rotator cuff exercises. That's why I stand and get them both done at the same time. But if you have a little bit more free time, you know, lay on the floor. So pretend I'm laying on the floor and it's still the same thing. You keep your elbow attached to your side and you just lift it up. Okay, so it's still the same thing, laying down or standing up. Just standing up, I get to do both of them at the same time. And of course, you would switch over if you were laying down on the floor, switch over. Again, keeping that elbow attached to your side is what helps the rotator cuff, strengthen the rotator cuff. If you just kind of flail it, you're not doing anything, but you could possibly injure your rotator or your shoulder. Um, let's see, there's another one. If you're laying down, I see sometimes people doing it when they're standing up. I don't like this one standing up <clears throat> because your shoulder is definitely, <coughs> sorry, definitely unprotected. But so if you're laying down and your, your arm, your back and everything is against the floor and then you just curl it up like that, keeping from your el from your shoulder to your elbow to the floor so then you are protected that's why i say like i don't like doing that particular one standing up because there's too much stress and too much room for you know kind of slipping up and taking the weight and if you're a little bit weak and then the weight kind of pulls or whatever even though it's a light weight again when you're doing rotator cuff exercises it's a light weight. You don't need a lot of weight because you're supposed to do more reps, not your, your, your strengthening your rotator cuff muscle. You're not bulking your rotator cuff. You, you, you can't bulk your rotator cuff, okay? So we're just strengthening those muscles around the joint to keep that joint together <clears throat> so it doesn't slip out. So like I said, years ago, had someone told me about rotator cuff exercises, I probably wouldn't have the shoulder issues that I have, but thank God now, <laughs> I have my acupuncturist who, whenever it slips out, which very rare happens because through years of strengthening my rotator cuff exercises, I've kind of, you know, gotten that up to, up to par, so to speak. So they, they don't dislocate. Um, I had an issue a couple of weeks ago. Some people may have seen the acupuncture suction things, um, you know, the bruises and stuff, but you know, it, it's better now. So, you know, four weeks you know, and, and I'm back into, you know, action. I never stopped lifting. Um, I just kind of, you know, did some different angles and stuff until my acupuncturist, Luke, was able to get this 100%, okay? So rotator cuff exercises are very important. And if you feel like you have, or if you already have an injured shoulder, if you feel like your shoulder is weak or one shoulder's weak, both shoulders weak, I would definitely, when I first started learning about the rotator cuff exercises years ago, I started doing them three times a week, not just on shoulder day. I would do it like say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or, or you know, where, however my shoulder days, you know, or my shoulder day worked. Um, so, you know, or, or like, you know, Sunday, like most of the time my shoulder day is on Thursday. So I might do it, you know, Sunday at home, you know, with some light weights and then Tuesday and then Thursday. But I would definitely try and get it in two to three times a week um, to get those rotator cuff muscles stronger. And then once you feel like they're strong, like right now, I just do them as a way to loosen up my shoulders on my shoulder day. So, um, you know, so I just do them one, once, once a week now. Um, I feel like they're, you know, they're, they're strong enough to kind of handle. Plus I don't do crazy break dancing, you know, things anymore. So I don't dislocate my shoulder. <laughs> so um, I used to slide on the floor and it would pop out and I would put it back in and continue to dance. So it was crazy. Um, but I digress. I'm older now, way old, and uh, I can't do those things anymore. But um, so take those rotator cuff exercises and, you know, definitely try and incorporate them into your routine um, through the week through just your shoulder routine, um, but definitely incorporate those rotator cuff exercises to get those rotator cuff muscles strong. Again, imbalance creates an injury. So if your inside muscles are strong, you know, with your outside muscles, everything's gonna, you know, be copacetic. If your outside muscles are strong and you're forgetting about the inside, then something's gonna, 
you know, let loose. It's, it's the inevitable. So if you don't have shoulder issues, don't think, oh, I don't have to do it. If you don't have shoulder issues, I still encourage you at least to do the, the rotator cuffs um, exercises at least once a week just to keep them strong so that you don't create an imbalance because you never know until it's too late if these guys are stronger than the inside guys you know what I mean so I hope that helped keep this video learn those rotator cuff exercises incorporate those rotator cuff exercises if you need or want any other help with nutrition or working out or you know trying to prevent certain injuries different exercises to do so please look me up uh danny k wellness.com danny k wellness on facebook um you know message me below this video here you know whatever i do have an app in the app store um for Apple. I'm not sure if it's in Google Play yet, but it's Danny, D-A-N-I, the letter K, so you can contact me through my app. Um, so at, contact me if you have any questions. Of course, if you're here at Westminster locally, you can pop in the gym and give me a holler. Give the gym a call, give me a holler, and I'll answer your questions, help you out, whatever you want. So stay tuned, stay informed, stay motivated. Bye.